welcome to episode 59 of Let's Hear It. Today's guest is Mike Dillon. has a band called the Mike Dillon Band, which has made many, many records, many tours over the years. He's also collaborated with Les Claypool, Ani DeFranco, Ricky Lee Jones, many, many more people out of New Orleans musicians. And he's going to come on and show us a vibraphone, which is the instrument he's most well known for. has a pedal board, conjures up all kinds of incredible sounds. Also going to show us his tablas, which are hand drums from India, and those also really, really special sound. And he managed to make three records during the pandemic over the last year, and they're all coming out on vinyl on March 12th via the Royal Potato Family label. And he's going to tell us about those and tell us uh, about the vibraphone and the tablas. Hello, Mike Dillon. Hey, Gary. How you doing? Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for coming on. Where are you? I am at Greenwood Social Hall in Kansas City, Missouri. It looks pretty amazing. What, what's going on in there? Well, there's tons of art. My wife has this amazing uh, collection of art, and she sh shows uh, her art and different friends' art. And before the pandemic, there was always either music concerts that are happening here or people shooting videos or sometimes art shows and she's always painting and doing stuff here so it's a real creative space it was an old church built in the early part of the last century and it was just sitting vacant and she found a, a benevolent landlord who fixed it up for her and um, yeah we rent this amazing space now and that's where I've been holed up for the past year hmm. benevolent landlord is a good name for a band maybe Benevolent landlord <laughs> by the new band COVID-19. <laughs> well, it's obviously a creative space because somehow you managed to come up with three full albums that you recorded in 2020 that came out on Bandcamp. Now they're coming out on vinyl thanks to the uh, wonderful record label, The Royal Potato Family. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Calibro. Yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. There's a couple of them. That's amazing. Uh, so how did you how did you do all the recording? Were the people with you? Were you sending tapes around? How'd you make it happen? Yeah, it was really really fun because um, all of a sudden I'd been on tour for three months, wrapping up my tour on one of a release that Kevin had put out, and then all of a sudden I know we we're in lockdown, and I just started recording in here, recording on my little computer. The next thing I know, my buddy Matt Chamberlain, drummer out in L.A., he's an amazing drummer. You probably know of him. I do. Um, so we were talking. He was just recording a lot, and I was recording. I was, we were sending each other tracks back and forth. And I had just gotten all these, like, like gotten a Moog synth and this deep mind thing made by Behringer. And I was experimenting with Malik Cat running synths and... Had a couple of weird drum machines, not that weird, but like a hand sonic and then an ulterior drum brute. It's just making loops and I'd send it to Matt and I'd be like, hey, this is this weird song, put a drum beat on it. He's like, cool, I'll run it through my ARP. Hmm. And so, and I heard it, I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I just, we just started doing that, he and I first. And then the, my buddy Chad Mize, who has a studio, he and I were texting, I was like, bro, are you working yet? He's like, no, everything was, the studios are shut down. And I was like, well, if you stay up front in the control room, I'll stay in the tracking room and we can both wear a mask. I, and we started taking, at that point, I'd written like 20 songs. Wow. And, and, cause that was June. So like in the first three months of the pandemic, I just didn't know what to do. Just having fun, like, you know, with the, today's version of the four track. I still call it, I was just four tracking, but you know, it's on GarageBand, that's what I use, because yeah. that's what I've always used since I got a computer. It's the easiest four track for me to run. And I would take the stuff and took it, Chad and I started working, putting it into his killer studio. And then we started sending it to like, do you know Robbie Seahag Mangano? You know Robbie? He's a New York guy. I don't think I do. Um, Anyway, he's a killer guitar player. And then my buddy Shane Therio, he's Hall, you know, he's Hall and Notes musical director, and he played with Dr. John. He was another guitar player. Wait, why is his nickname Sea Hag? Was he in the band, the Sea Hags? No. Um, that would have been his, great. 
I love that. You know, <laughs> he's good friends with Dave Drywitz from Ween, okay, and yeah. uh, uh, you know, he's he played in Sean Lennon's band, Ghost of a Saber Two Tiger, and then he's been in the Ricky Lee Jones band with me. So he and I were talking, and then he started sending tracks. So I would just go like, "All right, I need this song to sound like Captain Beefheart meets the Butthole Surfers," and he'd be like, well, "Who's perfect for that?" Sea Hag. Because he let, like uh, we did a European tour and all he listened to was the Captain Beefheart the entire tour. It was amazing. Yeah. So, and one of the reviews that just came out was like, "Wow, this record sounds like if Cat, uh, the Butthole Surfers hosted a late night jazz fest session." So I was like, "All right, they got it." Because that was sort of the concept. Once we got in the studio, we we're like, "All right, we're not in a hurry. We're not not in a deadline. We can just." take our time making a record. Chad was giving me a killer bro deal. And, um, you know, it was nice. Cause usually, especially in this day and age, you, you, you know, and especially like that record labels don't have any budget to make records with. I try to tell these younger kids today, like we used to get like a shitty <laughs> 150,000 deal to make a record in the early nineties. And our manager was apologizing for only getting us a $150,000 advance. And, yeah. you know, and, back in the Billy Goat days. And then, um, so it was nice to be able to be like, all right, there's no gigs. We don't have to run off the tour. Let's just make a record. So anytime I had a little money come in, I'd be like, Chad, I got $300. Let's go in the studio. So we'd go. And we just did that all summer. And then you listen to the tracks, take your time, be like, all right, on this track, I need trumpet. So I got, you know, Facebook Nick Payton and asked him to do some trumpet. Or on one track is like talking with Steven Bernstein. Yeah. You know, Steven, and yeah. I love Bernstein. And I was just like, bro, you want to do a track? Chamberlain and I did this weird thing and for the song um, Tunes and Further Adventures and Misadventure. And the next thing you know, I hadn't heard from Bernstein. And then he was like, uh, is this a pop record? Are you just taking your time with it? And I go, no, we're taking our time. He goes, okay. And then I didn't hear him from him for like another two months. He's like, okay, so what I did was a nine part slide trumpet orchestra and la 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 and I think you're gonna like it and we heard it and we're like wow so it was really fun just that spirit we're like you know we're just trying to be like if Brian Eno and David Byrne got together and just had all the time in the world and there's a global pandemic happening let's just see what happens get our people you know send out little mp not in yeah I guess mp3s and invite people to Return them to the Dropbox. So we're like, well, we're going to do here in a little bit. And um, I like the results. It's amazing that you can it is. collaborate, make records like that. So that was my summer. Yeah. Pretty much in fall, too. Very productive. I, I think your, uh, your song, Suitcase Man, should be the theme for all traveling musicians from now on. Everybody should do their own version of it. I agree. I mean, that, that song just popped out of the universe. You know, guys. All right, I got lucky on that one. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. Um, well, cool. Well, I, I know you have all kinds of cool instruments. So what what's going on with this vibraphone? That, that's you're very well known for your vibraphone playing. So tell us what you've done to this thing and what. How do you get the sounds that you get? Cool. The vibraphone I play is a K and K vibraphone. They're my company. Uh, no, k k is the pickups, and my company is a Majestic uh, vibraphone. And so k and k they make these ceramic piezo pickups, and on each bar I put a pickup on. It's held together by super glue, and it's a little eighth inch, and it goes into a collector rail. And out of that, into a four pin, into my pedal board, into an amp. And I'm able to... Uh, try to be Sonic Youth or Nels Klein or Adrian Ballou or whoever I'm trying to be with my vibraphone. That was sort of the, and it sort of came out of necessity. I remember in my first tour with Les Claypool and the Frog Brigade, I had an acoustic vibraphone behind his giant bass rig. And I, I think I cracked four bars on that tour. People <laughs> were like, why are you cracking so many bars? The vibraphone repairman. I was like, well, I have to sort of play loud. And then I got this pickup system, and then it was like, oh, cool, I get to have pedals too. So it is, um, it's great. It's been my journey of is trying to do something different with the vibraphone. Amazing. Uh, well, let's have an example and hear what you can do. Awesome. Here we go. 
All right, Gary, here it is, the electric vibraphone. for you started off with a little delay and then it had it go through the univibe into the phaser and I kicked on the fuzz I got a lot of MXR pedals in here and then the organ sound is the pog you know the really like that I don't know how, how it's sounding over the little headphones but when it's going through a big amp it's really cool and let me make sure I wasn't to try not to distort it for the uh, recording but uh, that's the vibraphone it's really fun to play and write music on Lionel Hampton eat your heart out yeah Lionel Hampton <laughs> A little Lionel Hampton for you. And when did when did you start playing the uh, the vibraphone? The vibraphone and mallets in general was all the fault of being in high school band. So I started in junior high. Well, actually, I started in fifth grade playing mallet instruments, and then vibraphone always scared me. But I was a marimba player in the marching band. I was in the Houston Youth Symphony. Grew up sort of classical, and I went to the University of North Texas back in the 80s. It was called North Texas State University, and got into the jazz program, and then playing a rock band. So a lot of hand percussion, and they made me play vibes. And while I was a good classical player, I was very scared of, you know, jazz and improv on this instrument. And then one day I was, I saw Thelonious Monk video. I was like, No, I'm not scared anymore. I'm going to go for it. And that sort of started the whole process with the vibes. And um, so I'd say like early 90s is really when I started getting into the vibes. And, That's great. Uh, uh, and uh, what led you to the tablas? Now the tabla, same thing at North Texas. I have the percussion instructor there. He had been to India and this was like 85. I was taking private lessons with him one summer. He showed me the tabla. And he, he got me started on tabla. And, Tabla is like the lesson, the instrument I still just take with me everywhere I go. It's the thing when I'm on tour, I wake up in the morning and play, you know, wake up and play for an hour, drink some coffee and play tabla. And uh, that's another thing I've been doing during the pandemic is my teacher, Alok Dutta, great uh, Bengali tabla player. And he's taught a lot of people, like Danny Carey was his, you know, study with Alok for years, the, the tabla and the music, and, and Alok even played on like a tool song or two. So 
Alok's a great teacher and a great player, and we've been doing every other week on FaceTime. So not only have I been making music with the internet, but still taking lessons at the young age of 55. So can you hear him? How does it sound? I can hear him great. for you that's amazing have you actually played indian classical music at all do you have you played with a sitar player or anything i have played with a sitar player um my friend in new orleans uh, andrew mclean he plays sitar and a couple different instruments and every now and then he and i would do sh shows i still go back and forth between kansas city and new orleans a lot and um but but i do study Cla uh, classical just solo tabla compositions called kaidas and relas, tukras, and it all begins with like the syllables like piece in five this is but that's like the first it'd be like five minutes long and until it's all and by the end of it you're, you know you're going you know on and on and on it becomes faster and faster but um so yeah it all starts from there and then i bring it into my music and do my own thing with it well great man um I want to wish you luck with these album releases. I hope people pick them up. And when you come to New York next, maybe we can have a, a claw hammer banjo uh, tabla jam. So you play banjo, right? I play banjo. I play guitars and some other stuff, but uh, it's amateur hour over here. But I really do like the claw hammer banjo. Do you know Eugene Chadbourne? I don't think I do. Who yeah. is that? Eugene Chadbourne. Look him up. He has the electric rake. He was a New York City guitar player for years. Look up Eugene. You ought to call Eugene and get the electric rake on your show. But it's great talking to you. I'm going to look back at you now that we've... Um, hi, there you are. So we're still videoing. But yeah, I actually like had a great time doing this with you tonight and today. So thanks for having me. Well, thanks, Mike. I think people, people are going to love hearing both of those instruments. So really appreciate it. Listen to that. Yes, indeed. That's so, such an amazing sound. Yeah. All right. All right. Gary, have a great Take night. Take care, man. All right. Bye-bye. I look bye -bye. forward to meeting you one of these days in person. We will hang out in Woodstock and go to the uh, co-op where doesn't like Dr. No from the Bad Brains work at the co-op up there? Uh, uh, he, is, he is there, yes. I have yes. seen him. I don't know if he works at the co-op, but he's He's definitely there in town. A lot of other cool people, too. Yeah, great. Um, so. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Well, thanks to Mike Dillon. That was amazing to hear the vibraphone with all those pedals. It's a, a mini orchestra going on there. Tablas as well are really, really an amazing sound. So thank you, Mike. We look forward to picking up your three records on vinyl on March 12th. And check back in the next couple days for the next episode of Let's Hear It.